This is the VK9001P. And it's kind of if you were to take a VK72, remove the weak spots on the side, give it a stronger turret, and the same lower plate. Yeah, this tank is really, really strong. And in today's video, I'll be showcasing, hopefully with live gameplay, just how easily you can manipulate battles in this tank to obviously go in your favor. When we take a look at the gun of the VK-90, it actually has the highest standard pen for any non-tank destroyer in the game. 290 mils. That's an insane amount. You barely even have to load premium ammo, which makes this great for earning credits. But if you do have to load gold, it has a pretty good amount of pen at 340 mils of APCR. The vehicle hits hard at 460 damage per shot, and it is oddly accurate. 0.326 dispersion? Like, what the heck? Yeah, this vehicle is really accurate. DPM-wise, it's pretty good at 2400. It's, you know, it's average. The IS-7 has similar DPM, so it's enough to get the job done, especially when you realize this thing has 2,600 HP. The vehicle also features combat stabilization, which is quite good for a tank that only reaches a top speed of 30, and it reverses at 15, so basically combat stabilization is perfect for this vehicle. Personally, I would say if Wargaming gave combat stabilization to the mouse, it would actually make the gun possibly nice to use. But, what do I know? Either way, the VK-90 is kind of crazy in the gun handling. That's one of the major reasons why it's such a good vehicle, is because it's accurate, it's got great aiming time, stupid, stupid pen, and uh, it hits hard. But, it's also the fact that the tank is pretty mobile for a Super Heavy, reaching 30, and the fact that it has ridiculously strong armor to a point where standard shells are going to struggle to pen your lower plate if angled properly. To the point where premium shells are going to struggle to pen your upper and turret. It's, uh, it's a little bit stinky. So here we are, game number one. And I don't know. I, I It's hard to know which way your team's going to go on this map. Like, look at them. Two of them are turning... We don't really have any mediums, so when I say we don't really, we have no mediums. And they get a light tank, which is a boss shot to own, so not only do they get a light, but the best light tank, which is currently in the game. Uh, yeah, this was definitely a fair matchup or gaming. Either way, uh, we should be fine, because our team is smart enough to make their way over towards the medium route, which is pretty rare, but we'll see what we can do, if the enemy team even goes this way. Got the 57 Heavy moving on up, and we're going to head down low as well. But yeah, you'll notice the VK-90, it doesn't feel slow. Like, it doesn't feel fast. I'm not going to say, like, this thing's a NASCAR. But we're, we're chilling at 30, which is pretty good for a Super Heavy, which weighs in at 90 tons. So, clearly, we can see that nobody has gone over towards this side of the map, which means they have to be over towards the other side. We can already see the enemy 60 TP detected. Is he going to go over? No, it does not look like that's the case. He's going to go under. All right, well, I don't really know what to do here. I could head back towards our spawn. Interesting, we have an E100 in front. All right, well, uh, E100 gets bonked, and I'm stuck with a bit of a crossroad of situations here. We'll get a nice shell into the E100, but the thing is is that I have the opportunity of either pushing the E100 or I can try and deal with the tanks off to my side. Now, right now, I'm going to aim it on the 100, and... Oh, that was really sad. All right, well, let's see. Grill's already dead. Our team is just absolutely steamrolling, to be completely honest. All right, let's just aim it on the 100, and... Bonk. Unfortunate. Chief didn't hit us. You know, you'd think for .326 dispersion, I'd hit more shots, but maybe not. Well, the E100's dead either way, and that's obviously really solid. The E4 and the rest of the enemy team appears to be making their way over towards our T110E3. So I'm going to chill in this position right here. Got the enemy boss shot to own, and there you go. Nice 477 damage roll into his vehicle. Now we just side scrape here. I mean, what's the enemy boss shot to going to do? Actually, he's going to get pushed by a 60 TP and die. I feel kind of bad for him, but at the same time, it's absolutely mandatory for me to kill that tank, so... It's pretty important. We can see that our uh, 183 just crapped on that Chieftain, and it's a win. I mean, it's literally a steamroll. You know, as Wargaming said, they made it so steamrolls don't exist anymore, clearly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we should do alright. Our E3 finished off the enemy Chieftain, and all that's left is the 60 TP and T110 E4. We get a nice shot into the E4 for 450, and then we ram him for an additional 200, and we don't even bleed health ourselves. So all that's left at this point is the 60 TP. Wow, this was an absolute steamroll. I mean, 
the enemy team stood no chance whatsoever. So now at this point, we're obviously just going to drive on over. 60 TP actually gets off the hill, and we're just going to keep on pushing down. Let's aim it on the 60 really quick. There you go. Nice 475. Now, fun fact about the 60 TP is that it actually features really, really poor armor for ramming. Like, look at that. Slight little tap, and we were able to take off a pretty sizable chunk there. Then we're going to load an HE. We didn't kill him, but we did all right. We got a pretty good chunk. So I would say with the Rams paired with the damage we did, we actually did over 3k, which is surprising. I thought this game was going to be very bad for us when it came to damage, but there you go, 3,200. And that's just kind of how the VK90 works. It's just, it's a great tank in general. The, the weight of the vehicle paired with the speed allowed us to get about 360 ramming damage that battle. Actually, does it tell us how much? Yeah, 340. And then when you pair that with the gun being great and everything else, just easy easy wins all day well here we arrive on another game this one being in molendike this is a decent map i'm not gonna say it's my favorite to drive a super heavy unless the enemy team goes down when the enemy goes down it is absolutely farm fest but when they don't it's a lot trickier because you have to make your way either over to the medium side or i don't really know i mean this is just such a large map i feel like if Wargaming wants to have this map in the game, they should make it like 10 versus 10 or put this into a special 10v10 game mode. Because right now, it's just very hard to do something as a heavy on this map when there's obviously the medium flank going on at the same time all the way over there. There's just no way I can get to it. But that's all right. We're going to focus on the heavies for now. And our team is for the most part sticking together, except for our 50B who is blind firing on the other side of the map. Why? I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. They have a Type 71, they have an E3, they have an Amex M4. They got a lot of heavies, and I'm going to take advantage of that if I can. Let's hope that somebody went over here. My lower plate is hidden, as we can see. However, it appears that they don't have anybody here. Of course, I say that, but it's probably going to be like a 183 staring at me when I roll this corner. I'm not going to side scrape this. I'm just going to... Okay, I should have side scraped it. We should be fine, though. Yeah, there you go. That's VK90 armor for you. You just angle it properly, and nothing pens you. All right, so we do have that AMX backing up, and we're not able to hit him, but that's fine. We'll just aim it on the ST1, and there you go. I actually need to do an ST1 video. I almost forgot that vehicle got super speed boost, just like the KV4. And uh, because of that, they are going to be quite fun to actually play with. All right, so the AMX is obviously stupid strong haul down. However, in the current position that AMX is playing, it's not haul down. Um, okay, well, we have the E3 in the back. There you go. I'm very surprised that penned. However, the AMX was able to cut through our turret as well. I'm not worried about the AMX at all. Like, that's obviously a, a threat, but it's not a big threat. The big threat on the enemy team is the E3 who is basically able to lock down that bridge to a point where nobody can counter it. So we're just going to chill here very, very briefly, and we're going to aim it on the side. Mm, it went low. That's really sad. That was a super duper easy pen, and it just said nope. All right, well, let's see. Amex is too far wide for me to do anything. So we are going to push over towards the Type 71, who's most likely on reload, I would guess. And... There you go, 476 shot into his vehicle. All right, I mean, that's that's a pretty good bonk. The only problem is our team is now dying on the other side of the map, and that type went through our turret cheek. Also very, very sad. Hmm, this is looking really bad now. I'm going to be honest, this is looking awful. All right, well, I don't really want to fight the AMX right now. I just don't see... Okay, good, he got shot in the side. Hopefully, yes, okay, good, our team's getting bonks out there. All right, we're, we're doing all right now. We're doing all right. It looks like this is a bit of a Sussler game for a moment, and it, it definitely is. They have a lot of death over here. However, I'm going to move on up. We finally got our stuff repaired, and we're going to see if we can get this Type 71. We also got the E3, and this is obviously the big threat that we need to get out. So we got one shell into the E3. Type 71's flanking, and with that, the E3 has now put himself in a really, really bad position where he has me on his side, which is obviously forcing him to push up. Same for this 183, who we're going to get a nice 460 shell into. We have just broken 3,000 damage. I've played this game pretty passive, but I feel like that was the right move. There's no reason to play aggressive when, obviously, um, our team is kind of falling apart around us. So right now, we are going to chill right here, where the type cannot see us. 
I'm gonna load it in a... Eh, I could do an HE shell. Yeah, let's just... Oh, really? Okay. Well, unless the shell just disappears. We should be alright. I'm just gonna stay in a side scrape, but whatever. That was really, really disappointing. Alright, let's try this again. There you go. That's what I wanted to happen the first time, but I don't know. Kind of just disappeared. Alright, let's push over towards the T-110 E3. See if we can get a little bit of a chunk of Rooney into him. Even an HE on his rear. Bonk. 642 chunker. And there you go. That's an easy win. So we played it passive. We played it right. We did 4,200 damage, and it was a pretty easy win. This is why the VK-90 is just so good. It's got great armor, and even though that type did pen us in the side scrape, we had obviously a lot of HP, we out-trade him. It's just such a nice tank to drive, and we can see that. There was almost zero effort needed to be put into these battles. So, I think this tank's fantastic. It's probably the best heavy to get your hands on when it comes to the collectors. I don't know, though. The Super Conk and AMX M4 are also really, really good. Same for the E6 and Concept. Honestly, just all the collector heavies are really good as of right now. But uh, I think that this tank is fantastic, and I would definitely say that it's a good pickup. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.